ready to start our service this morning. It's hot outside. Give me some of this. I'll go in there. Does anyone else in Bestville actually ask that you ask your man to be seated so we can start it? Amen. We're going to start our service off this morning with scripture by Deaconess Pitts, followed by prayer by Reverend Pitts. Amen. 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 all that are able to stand and stand for the reading of God's word. Please turn your cell phone to vibrate. Body. 
immediately went into prayer. God said, if I take the first step, then I can lean on him. So I'm leaning on him right now. Amen. And we also learn how to lean on, on, on God in a time of need. He's always there. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Any more testimonies? Praise God. Thank you. 
goes along with what I had already prepared for the love. And it was talking about forgiveness. And the thing about it is, you know, if, if you forgive somebody, you just pray for them. Because, you know, they know not what they're doing when they're in the sanctuary or they're somewhere out in the world. And they're, they're talking about you or they're, you know, you just got to forgive them. So, what I have here is, um, bear with each other and forgive me about any of you take a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord be taking Colossians 3, 31. Amen.
this morning. Amen. Give yourself some love right now. Amen. And thank God for all the visitors that stood up and shared with us their, their identity and so forth. And we certainly, uh, you have already had a something special to this morning's worship service. Amen. And we are trusting the Lord that will have something special out of service for each and every one of you. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house again yeah. one more time. Are you glad to be in the service? Yeah. It's good to be good to see so many people back from traveling around the globe. Amen. 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 We thank God for vacation. Amen. For cruising and uh, going on the beach and just poolside and all the other good stuff that God allows us to to enjoy throughout the year. Amen. So I just think it's just a good good moment. I know we have community service and I won't be long this morning. I try not to be I only mean, I don't know hold you here until about five. I'm gonna let you know. But, but why don't we get up and greet one another? Can we just get up? We haven't seen each other in a while. Let's get up and greet, let's get up and greet one another. Come on, get up out of your seats and let's greet one another this morning. Shake somebody's hand. Give them a hug. Give them a, give them a great big smile. Tell them that you love them and God loves you as well. Amen.
faith that, that we want to meet with one another before we meet God. And that was the creation of what is called the, the, the Narthex, better known as the vestibule of the church, was created out of that fact that we would meet each other in the vestibule or the Narthex of the church before we meet God. It's so good to see. Good to see you. Deacon Trainer back out this morning. Come on, James. He's a bionic man. He's half man and half machine. <laughs> we're glad that he's coming along quite well, amen. After the uh, total knee replacement, right? Yeah, okay, all right. Amen. I do want to uh, let the church know that, that Deacon P. Ray Wilkins, Wilkinson is, is doing well. He's, he's in CCU, uh, but they have stabilized him. Um, he went in last week for a procedure while he was under uh, the, the anesthesia. Uh, I think they said he coded twice. Doctor was able to bring him back. Oh, y'all don't know when the shower. God allowed God showed His grace and His mercy. Now He is just being stabilized and watered right now. Hopefully, we were praying that God would strengthen His heart as well to be able to go under to correct whatever needs to be corrected. As uh, far as his issue, as far as his heart, uh, heart issues. Amen. Amen. How many know that God is a heart regulator? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's able to do above and beyond what we can even ask, think, or even imagine. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for small miracles. Amen. Yeah. Uh, even even on our deacon board. Deacon board, it all look awful good this morning. Amen. Yeah. I had to get the memo. I was supposed to wear black, but that's all right. Amen. But then y'all look good this morning. And um, do want to uh, make known that the, the uh, sign of this is out there in the north of the church uh, for the church picnic. Amen. It's been corrected. We need to have our stuff here on the 12th, right? Mm -hmm. On the 12th. 2 to 4, 12th. 2 to 4 p.m. 2 to 4 on the 12th. Amen. All right. If not, you would have to lug it up to the park here on your own. Uh, so but if you want to sign up, uh, if you want to help with anything as far as the picnic, there's a sign-up sheet for that. Or if you want to donate, you can bring a dish. You want to put your name down on what dish you are bringing so that they can coordinate it. And that's August the 20th, amen. That's only two more Sundays away. Uh, but we will be holding morning service here at the church prior to going out to the park. I don't want to leave that out. I don't want y'all just go along to the park. I want y'all to come to the house of worship. First, most of all, let us celebrate the goodness of Jesus, and then let us go out to the park and have some food, fun, and fellowship. Amen. And in uh, my experience, this might be my second picnic here uh, at Friendship. And what I learned last year is the fact that there's going to be plenty of food. Oh, y'all don't know when to get excited. Everybody, everybody don't know when to get excited when they say food. There will be plenty of food. Amen. And I'm happy about it. Bro, Tiger, you got something else you want to share? Yeah, I didn't know, Brother Ethan, was you going to have any fans available for people who see you don't have food right out? Let me, let me get back to you before the week is over. Let's see if we can coordinate yeah. that. I know the people who don't have That's a good thing. Right out. Let's see if we can coordinate okay. the band. Uh, we're praying that the band will be rolling. Amen. Band will be rolling on that Sunday as as well. Amen. As we go up higher in the worship, I think I, uh, oh, I do want to mention that uh, my wife um, has lost her sister last week. And um, uh, she was eulogized on yesterday. It was a, um, a, a great humble and service uh, for a great woman of God uh, who served as a deaconess at uh, my home church, at Mama Baptist Church in Coriopolis, 
for I think over 46 years. Um, she will be sorely missed as well. Um, I know my, my wife will miss her dearly. Amen. Uh, so pray for the family uh, in that lost. Amen. Uh, her name was uh, Deaconess Barbara G. Button. Amen. Gibson Button. So uh, that's the, the loss that we had. And then on Friday, I got news that my younger cousin, I can't say little cousin because he's bigger than me, but my younger cousin went home to be with the Lord as well. So um, God's letting, letting this old preacher know, you know, you never know when your name will be called. You just better be ready. <laughs> just better be ready when the Lord calls your name, amen. It, it shows us, it really, it, for me, it, it, it gives me a sense of urgency um, um, and uh, how important what we do. Uh, some some of us just get up on Sunday and go to church as usual, but but we ought to have a sense of urgency uh, when we come to church. This is so important, it's so important to the lives of the people so that they can hear a word they can make that decision that by their own volition they can accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior so that they can be right and be ready when their name is called because as I shared with somebody earlier um, none of us are going to miss that appointment none of us are going to miss that appointment but we better be ready when when the Lord calls us um, Amen as we will hire worship service come on uh, Reverend Pitts, let's give him some love as he comes back to us. Uh, before we go into this word of prayer, I just want to just do a short announcement. The Men of Friendship is traveling to Antioch Baptist Church for Pittsburgh, PA, for the Acquired Day program. It starts at 3 o'clock. So I'm assuming. They would love to have some of us come out and so forth. Amen? Amen. So if you can, help us out, all right? Amen. Now we're going to right along in our service. We're going to have a, a prayer of faith by my good brother and uh, man of God, Brother Owens, is going to lead us in prayer this morning. Amen. And after that, we'll have a worship. Let's pray to the Lord. I don't know if you are a Pittsburgh still a fan or not. Yeah. But you would scream at the TV. Yeah. The king. Yeah. Come on, let's do it one, one more time. <laughs> Thank you for the safe traveling mercy over the highways. 
I want to thank you for what you have done and for what you will do. Lord, pour out your blessing upon this church. And Lord, I, I ask your Father God to open the window of heaven that they may not have room to receive the blessing that you will still upon them. Father God, for all the sick and shut in this morning, for every man and woman behind prison walls, for every woman and man that stands on the battlefield for our safety, Father God, even the president in the White House this morning, have your way with him, Father God. Father God, this nation needs a revival. Father God, it starts right here in the house of faith. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to have your way with us. Speak to our hearts this morning, Father God. I want to thank you again, Father God, for what you have done and for what you will do. I want to thank you for holding me and keeping me. I want to thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know about you, I'm going to thank him. Because sometimes we don't even thank him enough. Thank him. Lord, we thank you for peace and love.
verse this morning verse number 20 Genesis chapter 50 you know that's at the end of Genesis verse number 20 let us all stand and those who can for the reading of God's holy writ that's Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 what the reader of God's words says but as for you you fought evil against me but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. God's had a blessing to the reading of his own word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The English Standard Version says it this way. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. The New International Version reads this way. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. And using that verse, I want to tempt the priest from this subject as I tag this text as the spiritual guide. After another smart selection, I want to try to talk to you just for a few moments from the subject, a bad start to a good ending. A bad start to a good ending. Come on, water.
person, a bad start to a good ending. Our text today is Joseph's life in a nutshell. It is the culmination of how one can endure hardship and survival, many trials and tribulations, but yet wound up at the place where God wanted him to be. Amen. Joseph's life is an epic story about one man used by God, by the saving of God's people. In order for one to fully understand the life of Joseph, they have to peek back in chapter 37 of Genesis to read about the favoritism a father Jacob had for his son Joseph. And because he loved Joseph more than all his children. Where the text reports that Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. And if I may encourage you to stick a spiritual pen at that place of this coat of many colors because we will revisit this later in the sermon. Chapter 37 reports that when his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all his brother, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. How about telling your neighbor, don't hate me because somebody loves me. <laughs> then to add insult to injury, Joseph shared his dream with his brother and the text board, they hated him yet the more. And to cut across the cornfield because of the brother's hatred for Joseph, they conspired to slay him, but Reuben convinced them not to shed no blood. So they took Joseph and cast him in a pit. And as they sat around and ate bread, a band of Israelites passed by and they drew and lifted him up, lifted Joseph up out of the pit and sold Joseph to them as a slave for 20 pieces of silver. They brought Joseph into Egypt. The brother uh, took the coat of many colors and they killed a kid goat and dipped the coat in the blood and they brought the coat back to Jacob acting as if they didn't know what became of Joseph and Jacob interpreted as the son who he loved the most was devoured by an evil beast and Joseph is without out rented his clothes. Jacob rented his clothes and put on a sackcloth upon his loins and mourned his son for many days. So here we have it. Jacob thinks Joseph is dead. And while Joseph was in a strange land trying to survive in a strange house called Potiphar. Yet Joseph advances in Potiphar's house all because the Bible reports God was with him. Some ought to shout right here. Because how many know it doesn't matter uh, logistically or demographically where you are. If God is with you, your gift will make room for you. Can I get a witness, y'all? Joseph advanced because he, he did a great job for Potiphar. And his household, in spite of being lied on by Potiphar's wife, who wanted to cheat on her husband with Joseph. And Joseph was thrown into prison for two years. Yet in prison, God used Joseph's gift to interpret dreams and interpreted two prisoners' dreams, one butler and one the baker. It was through their spirit Joseph was called upon to interpret Pharaoh's two dreams about the coming famine. And because of Joseph's gift, Pharaoh elevated Joseph to become second in command and made him ruler over all the land of 
Asia. The famine came to pass, and it was so intense that it forced Joseph's family down into Egypt to purchase food. So we arrive at our text at the moment of truth. And after 25 years of separation from his family, the tension of jealousy and sibling rivalry, personal rejection, Joseph stands over his brothers as the dream he shared with them before they sold him off into slavery showed him that he would say, for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good and to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You ought to tell somebody Joseph had a bad start to a good ending. And in spite of what all Joseph had to go through, even though he had a bad start, God seen to it that Joseph would have a good ending. And I don't know who needs to hear this today. I don't know who needs this real word. Uh, but don't worry about how you have started out. Yes, you might have a bad start. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to have a good ending. Yes. This text is sharing with us that they meant for evil against you, but God meant it for good. Yes. That means I don't care what evil circumstance you find yourself going through at this present time still going to have a, a good ending. And I don't care how many hounds uh, hell has unleashed on you, you're still going to have a good ending. I don't care how many demons or devils attack you, you're still going to have a, a good ending. Uh, your ladder is going to be better than your former. See, the text is former that, that of a good ending. Watch this. Joseph said, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Now watch this. Joseph employed the term meant using the Hebrew verb that traces its meaning to weave or to plait. In other words, the text would read, you wove evil, but God rewove it together for good. I don't miss that. Uh, now you will take that spiritual pen out where I told you to stick it and look at the coat of many colors. And in order to make the coat of many colors, one would have to weave the different patches of fabric together to give the coat the different array of color. The same way you would make a quilt. But we do know, according to the narrative, the brother tore and rewove the coat of many colors. Now don't miss this. Only to weave a coat, a cloak of darkness and evil in Joseph's life. Anytime someone meant to do evil to you, what they really want is for evil to be woven in the fabric of your life where it becomes a part of your DNA. They want to plot evil in your life to where you can't even shake it off. It becomes a part of you. They want you to, to, to don evil like a garment. They want to dress you in evil. All they want to do is, is for you to experience misfortune. But watch this. The very thing that the brother was jealous of was the very thing they used to attack Joseph. See, the color of many colors that represented life, uh, the brothers removed it and wove Joseph a coat of death. And my brother and sister, the very thing that that person might be jealous about in your life is generally where they're going to launch their attack at. And you might have to watch out for folks who are jealous of your marriage. They'll attack your marriage. You got to watch folks that are jealous of your leadership. They'll attack your leadership. You got to watch folks that are jealous of your gift. They'll attack your gift. You, the only thing is a man's disgust is really, uh, is really their interest in disguise. Oh, I think I preached to somebody. So don't let good folks fool you. When they talk about you out of jealousy, they really want what you got. The good news is whatever man tries to weave in your life, God can reweave it for good. Can I get a witness? Whatever the enemy weaves death on you, God can reweave life. Whatever the enemy weaves sickness in you, God can reweave health. Whatever Prosperity. Isn't God already 
While your enemy wove evil, God rewove good. God can weave your garment of righteousness. He can weave your garment of humility. God can weave your garment of praise. If any praises in the house, did you bring your garment of praise with you this morning? Come on, if you really brought your garment of praise, you would sit down on the Lord right now. Because you know whatever what man did for evil, God did it for good.
testimony. But God. Uh, I'm so glad I serve a but God this morning. Also, a text shares with us that God had to reread the victim into being victorious. Look at the text. All that Joseph went through being a victim of hatred, a victim of jealousy, a victim of lies, a victim of being ostracized. Joseph could have easily paid the victim. Joseph had a legitimate excuse to fall to the trap of being a victim, especially when he was victimized by his own family, yeah. his own flesh and blood. Yeah. It's one thing being victimized by a stranger, but when the family or your church family victimizes you, it takes it to another level. The reason being is you don't expect to be victimized by someone whom you have ties with. Therefore, when family or church family victimizes you, Jimmy, you are blindsided by the victimization. But regardless who victimizes you, our text shared with us, you don't have to play the victim. Joseph was a victim, and his victimization took him to a place he couldn't hardly imagine. He did, but he didn't play the victim. Joseph chose to live a victorious life, in whatever circumstance he found himself in. Joseph was victorious in Potiphar's house. He was victorious in jail. He was victorious in Egypt. And there to the share with us, there is no reason for you to play the victim. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstances, no matter how you feel, there's no reason for you to play the victim. When you play the victim, we have a tendency to blame everyone else.
had to reweave uh, your text, your text into a testament. He also had to reweave you from being a victim to be victorious. But lastly, he also had to reweave the past into the present. At this moment, Joseph was able to use hindsight to see what God had had allowed to happen in his life in order for him and his brothers to this day. This is where it all made sense to Joseph of enduring evil in order to be used to bring about good. This is where our text Jock deposes the past narrative into our present narrative. Our text reports but God meant it unto good to bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive. You have to understand everything that we go through isn't just about ourselves. God will be using your present circumstance to bring about a greater good to a futuristic event. In other words, everything that you go through isn't about your own spiritual development. Rather, it's, it's to get you to a place where God can use you for the saving of his people. See, the hell that I've been through and the hell that I've been through was so that somebody else didn't have to go through the same hell. The reason Jesus existence that Jesus went through hell so we don't have to go to hell. He became a curse so we don't have to be cursed. Even though Jesus had a bad start, he had a good ending. It was a bad start when he came into his own and his own received him not. It was a bad start when he was falsely accused. It was a bad sold for 30 pieces of silver. It was a bad start when they ushered him from 
that has shed its blood. As the congregation stands, come on, let's stand. Let's hurry up. Stand. I'm done. I ran out of here.
is to bring three invitations. The first one, what must I do to be saved? Second, if you want to join her, join her by personal experience. Or third, if you just want to renew your relationship with them, you can do so at this time. Is there another? All right, let's play hardball. Grab the person's hand next to you. Look them in the good eye. And tell them if you want a good eye on front. And accept Christ in one of those categories. I'll walk with you. And just bring them on down. Just bring them on down. Amen. All right. All right. What are we supposed to report? Jessica. Jessica, how you doing? All right, well, come on, come on, just God bless, come on, 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 and you just want to come into a new relation with him at this moment. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jessica this morning, for rededicating her life, for knowing the importance of walking with you. We ask you, Father God, would you walk with her every step of the way? Be with her, lead, guide, and direct her. Anoint her afresh. And even on this path, this journey that you, this spiritual journey that you have her on right now, we ask you, Father God, to make yourself real to her in her life. Let you make yourself known to her as well. And we thank you this morning for another soul coming back to Christ. One that the enemy cannot steal. Thank you. We give you glory and we give you the honor. This makes the trip worthwhile coming in. Yeah. To see another soul come back to you. And we give you all the honor and we give you all the praise. Now we ask Father God to continue to fill her up with your spirit. Anoint her from head to toe. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, whatever her foot may try, let her be able to conquer. Have your way in her life. In Jesus' name we pray. And let our God surely say amen. 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 Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. For just a this morning. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We're going to transition into our communion service. Are we ready? All right, let's go. Let's go. As we transition ourselves to our community service, we're still in worship. We're still in worship, big man.
He said, as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. The bread, a representation of his broken body, and the cup, the New Testament of his blood. The New Testament is no longer written on earthly tablets, but it's written on fleshly tablets, written on the hearts of men and women. It's a time where we come really to show our thanksgiving and our admiration and our love that we have for Jesus for what he had accomplished at Calvary's cross for a sinner such as you and I. There was a gulf between man and God, but Jesus came and filled the gulf at Calvary's cross. Scripture said there's no shedding of the blood, there's no remission of sin. It's a time where we really show our thanksgiving. It's also called the meal of Eucharist, the meal of thanksgiving. A time where we just thank God for his finishing works at the cross. But it also says that this always should be preceded by a solemn self-examination. A time where we look inside of ourselves. It's not a time where you look to the left or the right or the front or the back. It's time to look inside of yourself and ask God for the of the sins that we may have heard since the last time. We have gathered around this community. Of course, the truth of the matter is, none of us are worthy to man in the on the man. But it's the righteousness that is imputed unto us, outside of ourselves, from Jesus Christ, a righteousness that's imputed to us, that puts us in a right relation, in a right position, to make us worthy of the So we're going to do a moment of sound and prayer. Because Scripture tells us, all right, it says that anyone who Take of this unworthy is guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. This has caused many to be weak and sickly and many and many sleep. So we'll do a moment of silent prayer and ask God to forgive us of our sins. Let's bow our heads. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us pray, Father God, we thank you again for allowing us to partake of these sacraments from the Holy Communion table, the bread, the representation of the broken body, the cup, the testimony of your blood. Even though they're secular elements, are used for a very sacred purpose. So we ask you to consecrate them, and we ask you to sanctify them. We ask you to set them apart from the specific use of our peoples, that you will get all the glory, that you will get all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let our Lord you say.
the same piece you all have my wife's work for you. Also, the same way, two cups of sand, drink it all in this cup, and test my blood. That's often as a key of this brain, and drink it this cup, we do so for the Lord's death. Thank you. 